4.3 Orbital Overlap and Hybridization So far, we have taken a very simple view of covalent bonding based primarily on the use of Lewis structure. Lewis structure, however, tells us nothing about why covalent bonds are formed or how electrons manage to be shared between atoms. No does the Vesper theory. Covalent bonds are formed by the overlapping of atomic orbitals to form molecular orbitals. As a result of the overlap of the two orbitals, the electron become packed and produce a region of high electron charge density. A covalent bond is formed. Basically, there are two types of covalent bonds, sigma bond and pi bond. Next, we will have a look at the formation of both sigma and pi bonds. Therefore, at the end of the lesson, you should be able to draw and describe the formation of sigma and pi bonds from overlapping of orbitals. Before we have a look at the formation of sigma and pi bonds, let's have a recap of atomic orbitals. So, S orbitals are spherical, and here's an example. And P orbitals are dumbbell shaped, and these are three P orbitals in the P subshells. There's Px, Py, and Pz. Sigma bonds result from the head-on overlapping of two atomic orbitals. This type of overlap places bonding electron in a molecular orbital along the line between the two bonded atoms. There are three simple overlap that results in the sigma bonds. The first one is the overlap of S orbital and S orbital. For example, in the formation of hydrogen molecules. The 1s orbital of one hydrogen atom overlaps with the 1s orbital of the other hydrogen atom. As a result of the overlap of the two orbitals, the electron becomes paired and produce a region of high electron charge density. A sigma bond is formed. The second hit on overlapping is between the S orbital and the P orbital. For example, in the formation of hydrogen fluoride molecules. One of the two P orbital of fluorine atom is singly occupied with electron. Therefore, the 1S orbital of hydrogen atom will overlap with the 2P orbital of fluorine atom. As a result of the overlapping of the two orbitals, the electron becomes paired and a covalent bond is formed. The third head on overlapping is between P orbital and P orbital, for example, in the formation of fluorine molecules. Each fluorine atom has one 2p orbital singly occupied with electron. The 2p orbital of one fluorine atom will overlap with the 2p orbital of the other fluorine atom. As a result of the overlap of the two orbitals, a sigma bond is formed. Next, we will look at the formation of pi bond. Pi bond is a weak covalent bond. It is formed by side width or lateral overlapping of two p orbitals.
Let's take formation of nitrogen molecule as an example. Nitrogen molecule is made of two nitrogen atoms with valence electronic configuration of 2s2 2p3. This is the atomic orbital of one nitrogen atom. A sigma bond is formed through head on overlapping by the two p orbitals. Two pi bonds in nitrogen molecule are formed when electron pairs are shared between two sets of parallel p orbital through sideways overlapping. Figure D shows the total bonds formed in a nitrogen molecule. Hey guys, had a little request for a discussion of sigma and pi bonds, almost certainly as they were, are with respect to carbon. So, here's what I need you to know. Sigma bonds between a carbon and anything else is the first bond that carbon makes with any other atom. First one is always sigma, always. If the carbon makes multiple bonds with an atom, like a carbon-carbon double bond or a carbon-carbon triple bond or something, a carbon-nitrogen triple, I don't care what it is, any second or third bond it makes with an atom, those are going to be pi bonds. Check this out. Here is a picture of a compound that I just invented. I don't even know the name of it. But the deal is that every first bond is a sigma bond. So here's a bond between carbon and hydrogen. The first one is a sigma bond. This one is the first one. It's a sigma bond. That one there, the first one, is a sigma bond. That's a sigma bond. That's a sigma bond. That's the first one. That's the first one. That's the first one. One of these is a sigma bond because one of them's the first bond. And that's a sigma bond. Every single bond carbon makes with something else is going to be a sigma bond. But every second or third bond is a pi bond. See, there is a bond there. One of those bonds is a pi bond. The first one's sigma, the second one's pi. Here, there are two extra bonds. There's a second and third bond. One of them's a pi bond, and the other one's a pi bond. Every first one is sigma, and every second or third is pi. So it's easy for you to tell whether it's a sigma or pi bond. But what does that even mean is the real question. Well, here's the deal when it comes down to electron configurations. Sigma bonds are always made from hybridized orbitals, whereas the pi bonds are made from leftover p orbitals. And we decide what the hybridization of the carbon is based off of how many multiple bonds that it makes. 